New research findings show there is a single cause for all cancers. This book provides exact instructions for their cure. The cure for all cancers, including over 100 case histories of persons cured, plus two revolutionary electronic circuits, one to diagnose and monitor progress, the other two zap parasites and bacteria. Haldridge Clark, Ph.D. N.D. Cancer can now be cured, not just treated. We are not accustomed to thinking about a cure for cancer. We think of remission as the only possibility. But this book is not about remission. It is about a cure. This is possible because in 1990 I discovered the true cause of cancer. The cause is a certain parasite, for which I have found evidence in every cancer case regardless of the type of cancer. So lung cancer is not caused by smoking, colon cancer is not caused by a low roughage diet, breast cancer is not caused by a fatty diet, retinal blastoma is not caused by a rare gene, and pancreatic cancer is not caused by alcohol consumption. Although these are all contributing factors, they are not the cause. Once the true cause was found the cure became obvious. But would it work? I set a goal of 100 cases to be cured of cancer before publishing my findings. That mark was passed in December, 1992. The discovery of the cause and cure of all cancers has stood the test of time and here it is. You may not have time to read this entire book first if you have cancer and are scheduled for surgery, chemotherapy or radiation treatment. You may wish to skip the first pages which describe how a parasite and a solvent cause cancer to develop. Go directly to the instructions on eliminating the parasite with herbs cancer curing recipe, page 19 or with electricity zapping parasites, page 30. Using the herbal recipe along with the zapper, is best. It only takes days to be cured of cancer regardless of the type you have. It does not matter how far progressed the cancer is, you can still stop it immediately. After you have stopped the cancer, you can turn your attention to getting well part 2. Read the case histories to see how easy it is to stop even terminal cancers part 3. Learn from them to avoid mistakes. Does this mean you can cancel your date for surgery, radiation or chemotherapy? Yes, after curing your cancer with this recipe, it cannot come back. This is not a treatment for cancer, it is a cure. But if you do not wish to make your doctor angry, you could follow her or his wishes, too. Be careful not to lose any vital anatomical parts in surgery, though, because you may need them later when you are healthy. Remember that oncologists are kind, sensitive, compassionate people. They want the best for you. They have no way of knowing about the true cause and cure of cancer since it has not been published for them. I chose to publish it for you first so that it would come to your attention faster. Notice to the reader, the opinions and conclusions expressed in this book are mine, and unless expressed otherwise, mine alone. The opinions expressed herein are based on my scientific research and on specific case studies involving my clients. Be advised that every person is unique and may respond differently to the treatments described in this book. On occasion we have provided dosage recommendations where appropriate. Again, remember that we are all different and any new treatment should be applied in a cautious, common sense fashion. The treatments outlined herein are not intended to be a replacement or substitute for other forms of conventional medical treatment. Please feel free to consult with your physician or other healthcare provider. I have indicated throughout this book the existence of pollutants in food and other products. These pollutants were identified using a testing device of my invention known as the Synchrometer.tm. Complete instructions for building and using this device are contained in this book. Therefore anyone can repeat the tests described and verify the data. The synchrometer is more accurate and versatile than the best existing testing methods. A method for determining the degree of precision is also presented. However at this point it only yields positive or negative results, it does not quantify. The chance of a false positive or a false negative is about 
which can be lessened by test repetition. It is in the public interest to know when a single bottle of a single product tests positive to a serious pollutant. If one does, the safest course is to avoid all bottles of that product entirely, which is what I repeatedly advise. These recommendations should be interpreted as an intent to warn and protect the public, not to provide a statistically significant analysis. It is my fervent hope that manufacturers use the new electronic techniques in this book to make purer products than they ever have before. Acknowledgements I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Frank Jerome, DDS, for the loan of his Parasite Slide Collection. If he had not made a slide of Fasciolopsis buscae in his student years and if he had not stored his slides carefully for three decades, finally to loan them to me in a generous offer, none of these discoveries would have been made. Furthermore, most of these HIV, AIDS patients could not have regained their health without his development of a new metal-free dentistry. Thanks are also due to his wife, Linda for her patience and willingness to listen to new ideas. And a very special thank you is due to Mary L. Austin, PhD. Now deceased, for her daily support and who, up to the age of 97, had an amazing open-mindedness. Another special thank you goes to my son, Jeffrey, whose suggestions, computer expertise, help with instrumentation, and editing were indispensable and very much appreciated. In 1996, the collaboration with Patricia Connolly Gorzen made possible our discovery of dental toxins and better dental practices. This led directly to improved survival opportunity for many terminally ill patients. Her contribution is greatly appreciated. Preface From time immemorial healthy people have Held sick people hostage the witch doctor, medicine man and woman, herbalist and clinician are all alike in this respect. They wish to keep information surrounding illness and wellness to themselves and away from the common person so that a profession of medicine can grow and become lucrative. The herbalist did not tell which herbs could relieve colds or bring on a woman's menstrual period birth control for fear that the people in need would get them for themselves and not need nor pay the herbalist. The modern medical profession overlooks information on prevention, it tries to make self-help and simple treatments illegal. All for the same purpose, to build and aggrandize their profession. This seems inappropriate, especially where communicable or widespread illness is involved. This example is taken from a text on herbology, this bath is a safe and sane procedure and will prove most beneficial to those who are obese and desire to reduce safely. In combination with the internal treatment with decoction of fucus, this course is worth considerable to very stout people, and should not be sold too cheaply. It is a grave mistake to put this scientific treatment in the same class as the many advertised nostrums on the market. It is also a mistake to let your patient know what you are using. If any do make this mistake, he will lose his client who will straight away go to a drug store for supplies. I believe hostage holding of the sick is immoral, fundamentally unethical, and needs to be stopped. Besides the moral issue, there is a practical issue. It would benefit society much more if the sick person were quickly rescued and helped back to productivity. A healthy society benefits each of us immensely. Likewise, an ill society injures us immensely, even when it is half a planet away. With this book, I hope to give away as many secrets as I can about the cause and the cure of all cancers, letting the truth come first and professional concerns come last. The human species can no longer afford to make a business out of illness. Global travel reduces our planet to the size of our backyards. In order to keep our own backyards clean, the neighbors must keep theirs clean. So it is with keeping our bodies free of viruses, bacteria and parasites. We all must be free of them. The concept of health as an arrow professional concern is obsolete. This book is intended as a gift to humanity. I make a plea to the public and private sector of the medical community not to suppress this information but to disperse it regardless of embarrassment or liability from the simplicity and newness of the cure, 
provided only that it meets your standard of truth. Abstract Summary The human species is now heavily infested with parasites, particularly the intestinal fluke fasciolopsis buski, the sheep liver fluke fasciola hepatica, the pancreatic fluke of cattle eugema pancreatica, the human liver fluke clonorchis sinensis and the common round worm, Ascaris. The increase in fluke parasitism is due to the establishment of a new biological reservoir in cattle, fowl and household pets. The increase in Ascaris parasitism is probably due to harboring of household pets. At the same time, Microcontamination of the human food supply with derivatives of the petroleum industry has occurred, these include solvents, antiseptics and numerous products used directly in the food industry. In the presence of isopropyl alcohol, F. Buska can complete its entire life cycle in the human body, not requiring a snail as an intermediate host, as it usually does. Other solvents contributing to parasitism include benzene, methanol, xylene, and toluene which now occur as residues in our foods and pollute our body products such as toothpaste, mouthwash, lotions and cosmetics. These solvents are also contaminants of animal feed, and thus are responsible for establishing the new biological reservoir or source of infection of flukes. Different solvents accumulate preferentially in different organs. Isopropyl alcohol accumulates in the liver, resulting in completion of the life cycle of fasciolopsis in the liver. This establishes the malignant process, namely the production of the mitotic stimulant, orthophosphotracine. Orthophosphotracine and a variety of growth factors are produced in the human host organs possibly for the parasite's own use, inadvertently including the human tissue in its sphere of influence. The presence of an adult fluke in the liver signals the production of orthophosphotracine in a distant organ. This organ appears to be chosen on the basis of DNA-producing bacteria present there, as well as specific carcinogens. The difference between persons who accumulate isopropyl alcohol and those who metabolize it promptly is the presence of aflatoxin B in the former. The coincidence of aflatoxin B and isopropyl alcohol in the liver results in the formation of human chorionic gonadotropin HCG. HCG becomes widespread throughout the body and is followed by orthophosphotericine formation. Aflatoxins are contaminants of our foods and may also be produced in situ by the growing mycelia of Aspergillus varieties. Such mycelial growths are only seen in the presence of copper. Vitamin C is oxidized and rendered useless in the presence of the parasite, Ascaris. The killing of all parasites and their larval stages together with removal of isopropyl alcohol and carcinogens from the patient's lifestyle results in remarkable recovery, generally noticeable in less than one week. Cancer could be eradicated in a very short time by clearing our food animals and household pets of fluke parasites and by monitoring all food and feed for solvents. Stopping consumption of mycotoxins and ceasing exposure to copper, cobalt and vanadium is essential for tumor regression. Since developmental stages of the intestinal fluke are found in blood, breast milk, the saliva, semen, and urine and can be seen directly in these body fluids using a low-power microscope, it follows that this parasite can be sexually transmitted and also transmitted by kissing on the mouth and breastfeeding. However, the recipient would develop cancer only if isopropyl alcohol were accumulated in his or her body. A common bacterium species, Clostridium, manufactures isopropyl alcohol in the digestive tract and under dental restorations. The use of betaine as a food supplement and removal of dental fillings clear these up. All the technical information presented here can be obtained with a device called a synchrometer and the methods used are discussed in how to test yourself. A simple circuit is also described which can be built by a novice and allows anyone to reproduce my results.